So I've been inspired by amazing people like Frances Campoy and Amy Chan to do a little bit more on video. So uh, here I am in my hometown of Enfield. I'm gonna go back to my home office in a moment and show you the latest open source tool that we've produced at Aqua Security. We released a tool called Cube Hunter. It's a penetration testing tool to help you spot if there are security issues in and um, bad configuration issues in the way you've set up your Kubernetes cluster. It's written in Python, it's open source, and it's designed to help you spot if there are security issues in your Kubernetes cluster. It essentially does what an attacker would do, looking for open ports, open entry points, things that an attacker could exploit. And then it reports that back to you so that you can improve the configuration and lock down the security of your Kubernetes deployment. So this is the KubeHunter website address. It's at kubehunter.acrocept.com. And we can come here and enter an email address. And we'll get back the command that we can copy uh, to save us typing it in on the terminal. That also includes a token which uniquely identifies the report that we're about to generate. And we'll be able to go back and view that on the website in a moment. I am going to target a particular IP address. Um, this is actually locally, it's a, a virtual machine running locally on my laptop um, on which I've got a single node Kubernetes cluster. Okay, that's found a few things. Let's go back and look at it on the website. And this shows us a nice report that we could potentially send out to other people in the team to share the information about potential concerns that we might have about this uh, Kubernetes cluster. So right at the top of the list we've got a high severity issue around anonymous authentication. So it tells us that Kubelet is configured in a way that allows anyone to send requests to the Kubelet without having to authenticate themselves. This is a uh, almost certainly something you want to disable. If you, know, if you find this on your Kubernetes cluster, it's very unlikely that you really need to have anonymous authentication enabled on your Kubelet. Uh, if I go and look at this machine, and we'll just look at the running processes, and uh, we'll find Kubelet, and then let's just highlight that anonymous authentication flag and yeah we can see that Kubelet is running with that anonymous authentication setting turned on uh, now I actually made that configuration change um, to, to, well, to check that Kubehunter would find it uh, which it did and that's great um, if you find this you almost certainly want to turn that off as I say We've also found a few medium severity uh, issues where my Kubernetes cluster is leaking information that uh, an attacker might potentially find useful. So let's uh, take a look at this pods endpoint. And I could, if I was acting like an attacker, I might very simply be issuing a curl request um, to see what I get back if I hit that particular port on that particular IP address. Um, and uh, I think it was 102.55. And if we look at that pods endpoint, we can see a ton of information that's been returned. This is telling us all about all the pods that are running on this cluster. That could be extremely useful information for an attacker. So now I have stopped that v1.9 Kubernetes machine and I've started another virtual machine locally which is running Kubernetes 1.11. It's actually got the same IP address. But I thought this time I would uh, run the code rather than from a, from a Docker container, I would run it directly from the open source code. And uh, yeah, I can just do that. Uh, like this from Python and we're going to pick the same IP address uh, 128.3 
So it's going to run all the same tests as we ran before. And this time it's found a much smaller um, set of well, services and it's actually not found any vulnerabilities. It's detected that there's a Kubernetes cluster running, but it's there's nothing to be concerned about here. So I think that actually goes to show how the default security settings in Kubernetes and in the installation tools, things like kubeadmin, have really been improving over time and, and every release things get, get tightened up more and more. Uh, so this is great. If you're running a, a V1.11 cluster, it's quite likely that there isn't going to be anything to worry about if you've used the default settings. So we've got several tests implemented in Cube Hunter already. Uh, you can see a list of what's currently implemented on the Cube Hunter website uh, at the moment. But it, the, there is no limit to um, the creativity of attackers and um, I'm sure there is no limit to the creativity of the community. Um, I would love to hear ideas um, or even pull requests for additional tests that we could add into Cube Hunter to help us, uh, well, to help everyone uh, make their deployments more secure. The more creative we can be with Cube Hunter, the more powerful a tool it will be, and the better we'll all be able to defend ourselves against attacks. So there's lots going on in relation to Cube Hunter this week, which is really exciting. Um, aside from checking the number of GitHub stars every five minutes, uh, which is obviously super addictive. Um, I've been uh, reviewing and accepting various pull requests that we've had. It's super exciting to be getting uh, new function added by the community, you know, just within a couple of days of releasing the project.